This Week in Biology 1440, we'll be investigating the effect of wavelength on photosynthetic rate. So we're going to look at how different colors drive photosynthesis. So let's refresh our memories on where, where these things are happening, uh, what organs are taking place in. So we're talking about the plant kingdom in this case, and plants have organs called leaves, and leaves have tissues, right? So there is a uh, upper and lower epidermis in a leaf, and as we see in this image, there is a tissue layer here called the mesophyll. So first of all, in the epidermis, there are openings called stomata that allow gases in and out. There is a mesophyll tissue where photosynthesis takes place, and there are veins composed of xylem and phloem that transport water and the results of photosynthesis. The sugary nectar, as it were, produced by photosynthesis is transported in these veins to the stem, stored in the roots, for example, things like that. Now, if we were to zoom in on this mesophyll, this means the middle of the leaf, this tissue here, see these green dots in these cells? Here's one of these cells enlarged, and we can see those green dots again. Those dots are organelles called chloroplasts. Chloroplasts have a double membrane. Uh, they have their own DNA, much like um, um, your mitochondria has DNA, much like bacterial DNA, oddly enough. Um, and they have their own ribosomes distinct from those of the rest of your cells. They're thought to have arisen via endosymbiosis. So a prokaryote living inside of a larger cell over time becoming part of that larger cell. Then within that a double membrane, we have the thylakoid membrane, which is a folded up membrane, lots of surface area, and it's impregnated with chloroplasts. Uh, I'm, uh, I'm sorry, <laughs> impregnated with chlorophyll, the, the green pigment. Uh, this entire organelle is a chloroplast. The chlorophyll is stuck into this thylakoid membrane. And these are the factories of photosynthesis. They're able to take sunlight energy and use that energy to glue carbon dioxide together into compounds such as glucose. Now, if we grind up a leaf and we hit it with a spectrophotometer, which you've used before, we'll see that there are two peaks where they absorb light the most, in the bluish purple wavelength and in the red wavelength, whereas over here in the green to yellow, we have much less absorbance. So I want you to look at that and then consider that and think about what colors of light might most drive the process of photosynthesis. That'll be how you develop your hypothesis. The probe, was, uh, the probe we're using today, well, we, we have two probes that you can use. Uh, one is a carbon dioxide sensor. And here is the formula for photosynthesis. Six carbon dioxides plus six water molecules um, yields glucose and oxygen gas. And of course, light energy is involved. So we're going to measure this using um, one of two probes, or perhaps both, a carbon dioxide sensor or an oxygen sensor. So we can read how much carbon dioxide is coming into this reaction, or we can see how much oxygen gas is being released by this reaction. All right, so we've seen an absorbent spectrum. You might be able to predict uh, what colors of light might drive photosynthesis. What I want you to do this week is to test red light, green light, blue light, white light, and darkness. Okay, those will be your treatments. And hopefully you can do three replicates of each using spinach leaves. All right, so in order to do that, you may need to go to the lab website and download the appropriate files to open up Logger Pro with the right settings. So if you're using a CO2 probe or both CO2 and O2 probes, for example, there'll be files you can download to make that work out. Okay, so um, this is the basic setup for the week. So we have our computer set up, of course. We're going to have a light bulb, a very bright light bulb shining down. We're gonna have our leaf material inside the flask and our one or two probes inserted into this flask. The leaves need to lay flat on the bottom of the flask as much as possible with their upper surfaces facing the light. Then typically between the light bulb and the uh, respiration chamber or the photosynthesis chamber, we're going to have a color filter. So a, a piece of basically plastic that I want you to be very careful with not to damage. They need to last all semester um, between the light and that color source. And what we'll typically do is 
uh, this is so you can see it, but you can also wrap the rest of this container in foil to keep light from leaking in from the sides. Or you can uh, you can you can protect it in some other way. But as so long as the the white light or the bright light is coming from one direction through the filter, and we're filtering out light from outside and from the room, so that way we know what colors of light that leaf is encountering. I want to point out that between runs, there'll be a fan at your bench that you can blow air over your CO2 probe to help bring its um, reading down closer to room levels of carbon dioxide. So you may need to do that between runs in order to kind of clear the probe. But please be very gentle with the probes. They uh, break very easily and they're very expensive. Um, they're, over, they're about $300 a piece and we don't want to have to uh, replace them if we don't have to. Okay, so